time in your presence, dear God. Dear God, I know your presence fills the entire world. I pray that we spend more time in your presence, dear God. Because in your presence, that's what we're transformed, dear God. To be more like you, dear God. I come praying right now, dear God. Give me your joy and your knowledge. Love you and your ways, dear God. Because it's your word that's a light of a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, dear God. So we need your direction right now, dear God. So help us right now to focus on the days of you, dear God. I pray right now, dear God, that we just desire more of you and less of this world, dear God. Dear God, I come lifting up those that are sent to you right now, dear God, because I know you are a mighty healer, dear God. I know the doctor's treating you, God, in here, but you are the only healer I know, dear God. So I'm asking you right now that he go in a mighty way on those that are sent to you. Lord, dear God. Dear God, we pray comfort on the green, dear God, that we know the death is not trying to you settle death on Calvary's cross, dear God, and then your father raised you from the grave. Dear God, when we miss them, dear God, we pray for your comfort. Dear God, they can't come back to us, but we can go where they are. So I pray that they come to this house tonight, that they don't know you, dear God, that they come to know you today, dear God, and they know your saving power and receive that grace, dear God. Dear God, our souls clean the dust, dear God, so we ask you to revive us.
prayers made for all meetings. Amen. Second chapter, first verse, it says, I exalt therefore that first of all supplication, prayer, intercession, giving of thanks be made for who? All men. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all goodness, godliness, and honesty. For this is good in itself, in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have what? All means to be saved and what? To come unto the knowledge of the truth. Then it says what? There is one God, one mediator. God between God and man. And who is that? Who is the man? That's what I want you to know. I'm talking about the man. Yeah, the man. Not the one that's sitting in the White House right now. But I'm talking about the man.
this session will be running at 9 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing everyone in person. Social distancing and masks are optional. Elder Christopher Collins and the St. Stephen Community Church will be the host pastor and host church. Um, there's a rich church form in both. The church school conference is asking for seven delegates with a maximum of, of 10. Registration is $40 per delegate.
talking to God. Amen. I believe that is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody mad. Amen.
himself. Mm -hmm. It's all about the glory of God. We're going to start here in, in 37, but we're going to jump back and pick up a little bit. But uh, verse, chapter 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. I want y'all to imagine this valley. See this valley in the spirit like Ezekiel did. See it. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, and I want y'all to say this with me. Oh Lord God, thou knowest. Thou knowest. And again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and you, and bring you up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. <laughs> so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise of shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. Yeah, and when yeah. I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet in exceeding great army. Then we'll do this last verse here. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophesy say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up, come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Remove anything that's hindering us from seeing you today. Let your spirit fall fresh on us. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh on us. Right now, God. Right now, God. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
want them to be in. You got to tell them. And if you don't tell them, the blood will be quiet at your feet. But if you tell them, they don't do it. They got to pay for their own commitment. Every man got to pay for his own commitment. Not only that, he told them to warn the righteous also that you're not sin. Warn them. If you don't warn them, the blood be required at your feet. So you got to warn You got to tell them. And he also told Ezekiel, he warned Ezekiel. Now, you be faithful. Don't you be rebellious. This is the same thing God is saying to us today. What are you talking about? Leave your door open. See, God, when he asked Ezekiel that question, son of man, can these bones live? What was his answer? Oh, Lord God, thou knowest. Ezekiel left the door open for God to do a miracle. He left the door open for God to work. He left the door open. He put it in God's hand. Oh, Lord, thou knowest. God already knew the answer to the question. That's the way he do us. He knows the answer to the question that he asked us. He put it in our hands to see how we're going to respond to him. We're going to respond to him. So Ezekiel said, oh, Lord, thou knowest. It's in your hands, God, whether they can live or not. Yeah, yeah, it's in your hands. Oh, Lord, thou knowest. He, he left the door open. So God is telling us today, leave your door open to the glory of God. Leave your door open to the promises of God. Leave your door open to the word of God. Leave your door open to the Holy Spirit. Leave your door open to evangelism. Leave your door open to being used by God. Leave your door open to be changed by God. Leave your door open to be revived by God. Leave your door open to be restored by God. Because God shows us in this Ezekiel 37, this was a valley of dry bones. He said they were very, very dry. So, so we know that bones, they once had life because they're bones. Then he said the bones, they were disjointed. You know, it wasn't all together. He said it was low. It was a valley full of dry bones. Imagine a valley. Imagine this one cop valley, the Tennessee valley full of bones. And they, they disjointed. They separated all over the place. And God told Ezekiel, this is the whole house of Israel. What are you telling us today? This is us. Yeah. You don't have to tell oh, show. This is us. God shows us. This is us. Oh, God's people, his chosen people, had rebelled, had turned against him, had rejected him. God brought them out, out of Egypt, out of Pharaoh's hand. And, and then they began to do their own thing. Forgot about God. Close the door on God. They shut that door on God. Yeah. I, I thank God. I came in and we were singing about the door. I'm going to clean up and I messed up. I'm going to walk right through that door. I'm coming on in. And God left the door open for us to do just that. He left the door open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, these people are, are rebellious. Uh, uh, they going to say they here and they going to do what you say is evil, but they're not going to do what God already knew what they were going to do. And he knew what he was going to do too. Because he told Ezekiel, you, you warned him. But then he also tell him the blessings that I will do for him. <laughs> yeah, that's the God we serve. Yeah. That's why we say God is good all the time. All the time God is good. Because he don't warn us without telling us the blessings that we could have. So the choice is up to us. Whether we open the door or not and receive God's blessings. Amen. Leave your door open. Yeah. Leave your door open. God, he wants to do a mighty work in you and through you. Mm -hmm. Leave your door open to grow. Mm -hmm. 
to no man open it. Oh, uh, it was too late. So right now the door is open for anyone, whosoever will, let it come. It's open to all men. Men, women, boys, and girls. The door is open. God's door is open. Come on in. Come on in. One day the doors will be shut. But God gives you a vision of what it would be like to come in the door, to walk right through them doors and come out. Oh, he says it's going to be a city. Ezekiel tells us 12 gates in that city. Then in the city, the name of that city is going to be the Lord is there. The Lord is there in that city. And you'll be there with him forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. He says it's going to be unity in that city. It's going to be one nation and one God. One king. He said King David will sit on the throne. We know that King David was the King Jesus. That's the man. The man.
us was wicked once in our lives. Sometimes we step back in wicked things. Amen. Amen. We be honest with ourselves. We are a work in progress. Amen. Don't think that you got it all together. Because none of us got it all together. God didn't come looking for perfect people. Because he knew we were not perfect. But yet, she said, leave your door open. I'm talking about your heart. Is your heart open to receive? You heard the word of God this morning.
Yes, I wasn't going to say anything. My name is Jarvis Matthews. Uh, I'm from St. Elizabeth Church. Uh, my dad, Ken Harris, uh, invited me. And uh, my grandma, Willie Mae Harris, is over there. 
Uh, I didn't stand up because I feel like I'm not a visitor. I've been uh, going to five churches growing up. My family's so big, so I love God. I love Jesus Christ. Uh, this is my girlfriend, Maria. Um, you know, I, I just retired last year, August, 21 years in the Army. And um, through, four, through four deployments, uh, I feel like God had his arm just wrapped around me and keep me safe. Because I hadn't seen so much and everything, and I'm still here. So. still fall short. Thank you. God, thank you for loving us. 
Thank you for what you've done for us. Your grace through your son Jesus Christ. Who went to Calvary. Got all our sins up on himself. He died the death we should have died. He took our place, so we just say thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord, that he didn't say that, but you raised him from the grave with all power. Lord, which has given us life and given it more love. Father, we thank you for each one that's here under the sign of all St. Andrew P.B. Church, where Elder Buford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.